High Wire Daredevil Nick will lend us scoring nearly 13 million views on the Discovery Channel and burning up the Twitter sphere after his 23 minute walk across a gorge near the Grand Canyon State Parks this week on a two inch wire. Nonetheless, he joined us before his feet to talk about squelching his fear and to give us a demo of his walking technique. And he is back right now in one piece, thankfully, to give us a sense of what he felt on the wire and what his next act will be. Hi. How you doing? You don't have the pole. You're good. You feel pretty I secure don't. in that chair right yeah, there. Yeah, I feel yeah, pretty well. No wind yeah. blowing. You watching you walk across that wire. The first thing I noticed when you got up on the wire was that you licked the your, your palm of your hand mm -hmm. and then you wet your shoes. Why was that? Well, it's because there was dust on the cable actually on that island side where I left from. Uh, the wind had been blowing up and it actually got that cable very very dusty and it was slippery. And as I stated before in our earlier interview, those shoes are designed for when they get wet, they become sticky. So I actually got them wet so they would grip that wire better. Once I got over the edge about 10 feet, it was not an issue anymore. The dust wasn't there, there Correct. anymore. What else surprised you about the walks? I mean, you were communicating with your father the entire time, but at one point you said to your dad, okay, I don't want to talk to anybody else and stop telling me how much time I'm into the well, walk. So there I was, wondered, there's yeah, a couple what was issues. It's head. such a mental game. And the reason why I told him I didn't want to know the time is because I knew I'd trained for about 45 minutes on the wire, but I didn't want to be concentrating on that. I wanted to concentrate on what I was doing, not how far into the walk I was. Um, but, you know, the surprises that came into play were actually the engineers had designed that cable to be at a tension of about 65 to 67,000 mm -hmm. pounds, and the temperature was supposed to be about 97 to 98 degrees when I walked. Well, the heat actually adds tension to the cable. Well, it was only 85 degrees when I walked. So because of that, the cable had slacked off. So it moved quite a bit more than we wanted it to. So that was a little bit uncomfortable. And that's and why you had to bend down at one <clears throat> point to let the wire stop moving? Correct. Yeah, I was building a rhythm into the cable. So instead of changing my paces, that wasn't doing enough. I tried slowing down a bit and it still was starting to kick me. So I ended up bending down, waiting to work some of those rhythms out and then getting up and starting to walk again. Was all of that some, I mean, you knew these conditions could be there, but once you're out there in the middle of it, I just got to imagine reality becomes slightly, you can prep as much as you want, but reality is different. What in was a the sense, I mean, I relate difference? back to my training when I'm up there. Yeah. So I knew that there would never, we'd never face more than 60 mile an hour winds while I was on that wire. When I trained in Sarasota, Florida, my hometown at Nathan Benderson Park, I had wind machines come in and create 91 mile an hour winds. Trained in 45 to 55 mile an hour gusts trained on a distance to the cable. It was a little bit shorter, but I would do it multiple times. I knew that I was overtrained, that I was right. prepared for no matter what I would face. That's really what it's all about, is preparing properly for the event. That way I can relate back to that. When I'm actually on that wire, I said, you know what, I know you can do this. You might be halfway across now, but you walked four times this distance in training, and you walked in 90 mile an hour winds. The highest wind gust that I got while I was out there was 48 miles, okay. actually. So you're ready. You were I was prepared, you, you were, yes. You've done a lot of yes. training. Uh, now, speaking of uh, things that people were talking about, we talked about the shoes, and these are shoes that your mom makes, but we didn't talk about before your pants, your jeans, and yes. you're actually wearing the jeans right now that you walked across. <laughs> I just touched them. I am. These went across that high wire. That's correct. Yeah. I am. Um, Buffalo jeans, right? That's right. Yeah. And I <laughs> I wear them just because they are very comfortable and I want people to be able to relate to me and yeah. I think if I was wearing something different some super high wire suit. exactly yeah. I think people would go oh he's different but I want people to go hey he's a father of three he's a husband he's a son he just has a very unique occupation and jeans are okay to walk in I mean I kept wondering are they gonna catch well, or something I like that did one of the be... biggest walks no, in I... high wire walking history in them so yeah they're all right and so this company Buffalo they're actually like now touting this is the the Nick jean and they're you guys are kind of in negotiations we about, are absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah they said we'll outfit you and your family for life if you yeah. Let us call them this, right? That's correct. All right, so we'll look for more on that. Let's talk a little bit about um, you and Joel Austin, uh, televangelist and the preacher. He was with you. You all uh, said a prayer before you walked across the wire. And I think, you know, a lot of people were sort of counting the number of times you thank Jesus and you thank sure. God up there. Yep. You, you're very open about, about your faith. Uh, right. I wonder what, how you sort of talk to kids and people who also might want to be you, right? And if they say, so if I, do you worry at all that they might think if I just have a strong faith, and get up on that wire that I don't need to have no, training. I, I'm, I'm very clear about that. And actually, on the View yesterday, I answered Barbara Walters with, you know, answered that question for her. I don't believe in any way that God keeps me on that wire. They're not, not even a thought in my mind. There's, God's not holding me up. You're there. keeping you on the wire. God's given me a unique ability. It's right. whether I train properly to make it across that wire. Again, God's given me the ability, but it's up to me to be prepared properly. 
you said that you, you conquered this. You said you weren't that scared on the wire. Let's talk about if something had happened. Now, you I think you told me before, six seconds the helicopter could have gotten to you, but you'd have oh, to actually, grab with, the wire. Actually, within 60 seconds. 60 but I seconds. would drop down on that wire, just like you saw me kneel down. Yeah. At that point, I would have just dropped down on that wire. And it's not like I'm holding on like this. Everybody visualizes somebody right. hanging over the canyon. And dangling. Not at all. I would wrap myself around that and hold on. And what would Again, you do with the pole? We just knew there the was not enough winds to force right. me off of that wire. Yeah, I would let go of the pole. But we knew, again, and I trained for that with that harness on grabbing the wire. Um, I wouldn't have went up there if, I, if there was strong enough winds to pick me up and move me over, which right. for some reason people have that conception or perception. But if you're walking on a sidewalk with 60 mile an hour winds, it's not going to blow you over. It's windy, yeah. but it's not going to blow you over. Well, it's the same as a wire, although it's not a sidewalk, but I've done this my whole life. Right. They blow past you. Yeah, they hit you. Yeah, you feel it a little bit. And that's where that balancing pole is a key, you know, a key thing because it gives me reaction time. Rather than getting hit with the wind and getting pushed over, I have something to sort of lean on. And you're counterbalancing with the pole. If you're going one way, you're using the pole to bring you back. Is that right? Bring that you back correct, the other way? Yes. That's what it, that's what it seemed like on that. Uh, you, the, what do you do next? I mean, I know you've talked about wanting to walk between the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. Uh, there have been some negotiations about that. Do you keep pushing for that here in New York City? Do well, you have something bigger in mind? There, there actually ha is what happened is somebody went to the police commissioner with the camera and said, hey, commissioner, are you uh, going to allow him to do this? Well, of course he's going to say no because he doesn't know any of the details and he has to protect the citizens of New York City. And I respect him for that. We haven't negotiated at all. We haven't presented anything. Once we lay everything out, we tell them, here's how it's going to happen. These are the streets that would have to close. I would never do anything to jeopardize the safety of anyone in the world. Right. Uh, and of course not my love, New York City um, citizens. So um, again, we would lay everything out. We'd make sure that we were more than prepared for, and when we'd go to any meeting, you know, any walk anywhere that I'm presenting to any commissioner, uh, we make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row before we even knock on their doors to say, here's how we're going to guarantee no one gets hurt. Here's how the rigging goes up. Here's the streets right. that have to be closed down and when. It's kind of all laid out. All the homework is done for them. They look over it and say, okay, now that makes sense. But again, completely respect him. If somebody threw a camera in my yeah. face and I was in his shoes, I'd do the same thing. But you, that would be what you your desired next it, act would be? It's definitely one of them. Yeah. There are many, many more, but it's 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 one that I really have my heart set on. Absolutely love this city and would love to do something major here. All right, last question. Are your kids going to follow in your footsteps? It doesn't look like it. It does not. 15, 12, and 10, they all are incredible on the wire. And none of them show any interest in carrying on the industry. And <laughs> I'm very more than, more than pleased with that. Their college tuition is set aside. And uh, again, they have my blessing on whatever they decide to do in their life. Does that mean the Willinda legacy could end with you? It doesn't. I have cousins who have eighth generation kids that are already performing that no doubt are going to do it for the rest of their lives. All right, Nick Willinda, welcome back. A tremendous feat. Thanks, Thanks for, for being with us here. Again. Appreciate it. Thanks.